Guess what I found at the Dover Threshing Bee last weekend? That's right, a Federal Supply Service, FSS Pulaski. And it's a good one, guys. We've got some work to do. Came out nice and easy. Leaves a lot of microscopic dimples. Take a look at this beauty. And what good condition. Yeah, it's a little rusty, surface rust, but we'll take care of that. But look at the edge. I'm willing to wager that this was never used. Maybe packed around a little bit. Just in excellent condition. Right over here you see the government issue. The FSS mark. That's what you want right there. I wish I knew what this other stamp was. That's probably telling me what the manufacturer is and I just can't find it anywhere. I can't tell if it's a heart or two diamonds or an anchor. I just can't tell. Once we get it polished up maybe it will it'll be a little bit more obvious. But this is a tool I've been looking for for a long time. My neighbor's got one just like this. It's not as good as this. He's been a logger his whole life. I've tried to get him to part with it, but he won't. Um, this was a government, uh, this was built uh, to very specific government regulations for wildland firefighting. This is a tool that I used uh, while working in wildland firefighters and uh, is named after its inventor, uh, Pulaski. Uh, and it is a, an amazing tool. Uh, to have around a homestead or firefighting or lots of different things. you got a nice big grubbing um, attachment there on the back and a proper ground axe. And I can tell this is an old one and of um, excellent quality. So I'm, uh, aren't you excited? I'm excited. So uh, let's, get, uh, let's get started on the re restoration of this and we'll get it hung. I'll build a, a very special handle for it. And man, I'm excited. Let's get to work. Fortunately, it looks much worse than it is. There's a, there is a, a light surface rust on it. There is some pitting, so we'll get a little aggressive. We'll take that material down because I want it, this. This is going to be a special piece for me, uh, and I want it to be uh, perfect. So we'll uh, start with the Rolock machine with 36 grit. First thing we'll need to do is to drive the old handle out of it. it came out nice and easy. A Rolock machine is really excellent for restoring these old axes. It just hooks up to a compressor and it's just a high speed or variable speed small grinder. And then you can buy these little stones in various different grits and they simply twist on. And a lot of you guys are restoring axes and ask me what's the best way to polish and, and this is the best way. I know not everyone has one but it is the quickest and it does take a pretty good sized compressor but that's what I'll be using. I have to monitor the temperature on these. Uh, the, ble the steel will get so hot that it'll melt the backing on the roll lock material and it'll get, start getting gummy on you. So I'm going to glass bead uh, the letters and then the casting inside where I can't get to with a roll lock. So the glass beater is really nice for getting in nooks and crannies of areas uh, for polishing, but the problem is, is it leaves a lot of microscopic dimples which really rust quickly. It's the polish, the smoothness of the steel which makes it um, less likely to rust. So we'll have to work in here and get all of these areas polished up again. So I got the Pulaski head in pretty good condition and to finish off we're going to use a uh, scotch bright pad, a large one. What this allows you to do is, is it's very flexible and it bends inside the crooks and crannies. And also I'm going to use this on the corners. Uh, it's all too easy to take off too much metal on the corners uh, using the roll lock uh, in, in all but the most skilled hands. So for the rest of us we can uh, use the scotch Bright. It's a much slower and, and uh, it'll work good and we'll hit the corners and then the hard to get areas. So here is the before. And here is the after. Got a nice polish on it. Not too bad for two dollars, huh? I always love the shape of these. I love this portion. I want to show you a little com comparable, a little comparison between a proper Pulaski and a Chinese offering. I don't know where this came from. Um, I've been using it around here a little bit because it's the only one I've had. Because I've been looking for one of these. Uh, an FSS Pulaski for so long, but I want to show you the difference. Here we have obviously made in China, uh, cheap garbage uh, being passed off as a tool, but uh, look at the difference in the cutter and look at the 
difference in the spade. Just uh, no comparison there. I'll be glad to get rid of this one. I've wanted these for a long time. I've wanted one of these for a long time. So using our compass, we're going to determine our correct pivot point. For our blade angle, if you want to learn how to do this, how to determine this, um, go to the end and I'll put a, a link with a clickable link with a video detailing how to find this point and how to properly grind your axe edge. We'll do this on both sides. You can just tell from working with this, it's really a hard steel. Jumping up and down the floor My hat is an animal And once there was an animal It had a sound that mowed the lawn This is remarkable, look at this. Whoever built this axe, who originally ground it, was a real pro. So here I have this, uh, the proper axis set, where it's controlled, where we have a perfect radius being made, and look at the, look at how close it follows the original grind that was here. It's, it's just, it's not hardly off at all. Look at both sides. See that reveal, where it's even, all the way across there? What that tells you is whoever originally ground this, sharpened this, Pulaski head knew what they were doing. This method of sharpening here that I just demonstrated with this cheap Harbor Freight belt sander tabletop unit is um, magnificent. I mean it just, look, look at that. Look at the results. And what do I have? Three minutes into that? I mean it's just right there. That edge right there on this rough sandpaper is finer than most you're going to find from store-bought axes and we haven't even began to put a stone on it yet. So here it is, the finished head all polished and cleaned up, razor sharp, got the angle on that, look at that, what a nice, look at that shape, that's going to be a cutter right there. You just can't get these anymore, you just can't buy this quality anymore. Man, I'm excited for this, I've been looking for one of these forever. I've seen them before, but they were, you know, just in too bad a shade all, shape all chipped up. This one here is, I don't think it was ever used. I didn't even, haven't even touched this, just polished it a little bit. That's the grubbing part, you know, so that'll be in the dirt. But boy, it took a nice edge and good steel, really hard steel, hard to sharpen. Or not hard to sharpen, but time consuming to sharpen. Got the FSS stamp there. I think that's an anchor. I don't know, what do you think? Did anyone know, know what that casting means? Let me know. I'd, I'd like to know. Um, I'm sure it tells who the manufacturer is. Be fun to put a handle on this. But that'll be part two. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you ever come across one of these, look for that stamp. Snap it up. In here to the back, and you can see where it's straightening out and it's correcting. Uh, the, the bad grind that I'd started with here on both sides. Mm -hmm.